The second part of our relative valuation is to compare the stock we're looking at to other stocks within its industry. While it's very useful to compare to peers like we did in the previous check, comparing to the industry gives us a greater perspective of where this stock sits in regards to valuation and growth within a wider group of companies. This part of the analysis compares the key valuation metric that was determined in 1.1 against others in the industry and the findings are displayed as a histogram. As you can see in this example, we've used the PE ratio because this company is profitable. This table below helps us further understand the relationship between growth, value and risk and how the stock we're looking at compares to companies among the wider industry. Along the bottom of the chart, you'll see the range of ratios from lowest to highest, left to right. Along the side of the chart, you'll see the number of companies within each bracket. We can see where our selected company is by the blue section on the chart and the blue tab at the top. The yellow line here represents the average ratio within that industry. Everything to the left of that in the green section is below the average, indicating that it could be good value, relatively speaking. Everything to the right of that yellow line is above the industry average and indicates that it could be overvalued, again on a relative basis. A stock passes this check if its ratio is in the green section, which adds one point to its snowflake valuation score. It fails this check if it's in the red section and therefore it gets no points added to the snowflake score. To get more detail, we can hover or click each segment and see which companies fall under which valuation and exactly how many are there as well. While we're on each segment, we can see in the table below the chart the details of each stock within that group. Here, we get some additional context about each company's valuation by seeing how its valuation ratio compares with its forecasted annual earnings growth rate and its market capitalization. Typically, you'd expect to see well-established companies with lower expected earnings growth rates to have lower valuation multiples. Conversely, if an early stage company has high expected earnings growth, investors typically pay a higher valuation multiple for it because they're willing to pay more for those future higher earnings.